This is my big brother for real. Hold on and one we second, just, right? uh, Uber okay. Just, Uber just showed up. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uber just, I'm so sorry. Uber Eats just showed up. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hey, thank you. So I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I love it. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. We're going to turn it to a stellar. Hey, listen, bro. Like Shaq, it needs to just be. We about to name that thing. It's the it's the PMJ Awards it's now. It's PMJ. The Beyond Sunday in the building. <laughs> <laughs> Man, listen, you know what's going on? Y'all know what time it is. We told y'all he was coming. The one and only PMJ is in the building. Yeah. Yeah. Thank the you so legendary. much for being here. I'm excited to be rocking with y'all, man. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. PMJ, how you feeling, man? You feeling all right? I'm feeling good, man. I mean, oh, what a time to be alive, man. We, you know, every time I turn around, God just keep blessing, bro. It's winning season. It's winning season. If y'all don't know, this is the family, man. This is my big brother for real. Hold on and one second, just... right? Uh, Uber okay. Just, Uber just showed up. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uber just, I'm so sorry. Uber Eats just showed up. I'm sorry. No! Hey, thank you. So, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I love it. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. <laughs> We're going to turn it to a stellar. We're going to turn it to a stellar. <laughs> Hey, listen, bro. Like Shaq, it needs to just be. We about to name that thing. It's the it's the PMJ Awards it's now. The it's, PMJ. Just, oh. <laughs> it's the PMJ Awards. All right, so I'm like gonna a, we go Beyonce, they gonna win a we gonna win us a PMJ. Let's we go, need to win bro. us a Let's PMJ. Go. Let's go, bro. Like okay, Shaq, how many do we got now, bro? Man, I think he got like nineteen. Yeah, nineteen. Hey, bro, is, it, is it nineteen? Yeah, 19 in four years. That's crazy. I keep oh telling everybody, man. It's, uh, first year we won two. The second year we won three. Last year we won six. And it, it's just been crazy ever since, man. So I'm excited. Can we oh show that God, Can we show that video, Lashane, when we get it? Like, so you came and you, you snuck the world, what is it, three years ago now? Yeah, three years ago. Three, 2021, man, we won Artist of the Year. Nobody saw that coming. You know, you know how it is, man. I think most people thought they put an asterisk by my championship. They was like, it's a pandemic. That don't count. Mm. Yeah, you yeah. Know, so we came back in 2022. Uh, then we had a Jordan year this past year, man. A Jordan year. Yeah. I mean, it was it was one of those. You talking about the, is it the first time ever three times in a row? Yeah. Artist of the year, bro. Yeah. First time. First time ever in history, man. In the whole world, Craig, God did it, man. First time ever. <laughs> he did the impossible. Ah, ah. Impossible. Remix. Remix. <laughs> so, I'm like, so when they say your name that third time, what's the first thing that hits your mind? Believe it or not, man, I'm sitting there, and if you at the Stellars, cameras are everywhere. So by the time they're getting ready to announce it, you can kind of see that camera. And I'm like, I know they're not finna put the camera on me. And um, when it hit me, mm. I just started thinking about all the hard work, you know, start thinking about um, the days when they closed the studio, wouldn't even let me in there. We couldn't, I'm, I'm not in Atlanta, I'm not in Nashville. I had to learn how to do it myself. In 2015, uh, shout out to DA who works in my church. He literally went to Guitar Center and bought me some recording equipment. We put it in my office at the church and we've been trying to figure it out. You know, so you start thinking about all of that, man. So it's um, it's still surreal. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Do you know what those shows when you won? Like the, you know, the thing is, us average people that's always watching at home, that's just a viewer. We always thinking he knew. Like they had to tell him 30 <laughs> minutes ago. Shaq, um, you ever feel like that, bro? Like, no, like you, yeah, you know, come on now. He he was sitting there in, in confidence, like, mm -hmm. no. Nah. You, you start saying your name before they did. No, yeah. you know, you know, then you go the crazy part because before that, I was up for producer of the year and I had just performed, so they told me to stay behind the curtain because I might win. I'm like, okay, let's go. So I'm standing behind the curtain and they even called my name. I thought I could have went to the restroom, man. Why y'all got me standing back? <laughs> 
But then they hit you with that one. And it was like, like every reaction, like I'm crazy. I'm watching your different reactions from every year. Yeah. It's like this reaction is like, it's because I just watched Last Dance by MJ. So it was like, you get what I'm saying? Like when he when he got that first ring, it was a different kind of reaction. Is this yeah. reaction like I'm whatever? But then like that sixth ring, it's like that like season, but just like, like, are you serious? Like, almost like we really, I had to work crazy for it. Yeah. But it's like, I'm I'm here now. What can you say? It's six of them. Was it, was it a different kind of reaction for you? Absolutely. That first year, I just wanted to be in the conversation. And, and it's crazy. And I'm going to have to shoot you this clip. The first year, Hezekiah Walker said, and the winner is, Yolanda Adams said, and the winner is, and Hezekiah Walker said, and mm. everybody in the section looked at me like, this boy don't want artist of the year. So it took me, they edited it. It probably took me six minutes to get out of my seat. Cause I'm just sitting there looking like, is this really happening? Last Honestly. year, you know, it was exciting. This year right here, man, I'm, I wanted it. I'm not even going to lie to you, man. I, um, yeah. We worked hard. I think that's one of the problems we have in the faith and in the body of Christ right now, this false humility that we are programmed to say, you know what, well, however God bless, however God bless. No, I don't think God has a problem with you wanting something as long as it don't have you. You know, so for me, man, we work hard. I'm situated and acculturated between two mountains. On my right is Atlanta. On my left is Nashville. They told me from the moment we started doing this, if you wanted to make it, either go to the right and go to Atlanta, go to the left and go to Nashville. So to do it all right here from Birmingham, Alabama, and to yeah. keep crashing the party, bro. I'm a yeah. party crasher. Hey. I'm a party <laughs> crashing the party. I, you hey, I'm Shay, he inspired you. You you got a party going right now with your shirt on. You got the PMJ <laughs> shirt on. Listen, <laughs> I, this, this is all. This is all intentional. I had to listen. This is the PMJ show, right? <laughs> this is Beyond Sunday, the PMJ version. You feel me? I had to make sure I represent it. One more button. We need. We need one more that button. Way. One more one button. More we need one more button. What? What? One more. Oh, oh, oh. One more. Let's 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 now you pull P and J. Listen, if you just tuning in, said, man, you said one more button. I gotta do it right. Yeah, one yeah. more button, man. It's beyond Sunday. Lashane, can we show Lashane? Lashane's in the building. Lashane, straight off the cruise. She went to go see. Oh Lord, <laughs> tell the truth. Put the, put the devil to shame. She went all the way to North Carolina to see the Beehive, Beyonce, last night. But she made it back to Beyonce <laughs> Sunday. So we've been we've been putting all all over it. But welcome back, Lashane. Welcome back to the party. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so listen, we want to ask you a question, PMJ. Let's go. Black Sheep, Shaq, we were talking about this, man, kind of what it reminds you of. Explain like, this black sheep concept, and Shaq, you can kind of throw the question at him. Go ahead, bro. So the whole, the whole like black sheep concept, and like it, it just, it's just like they trying to like NBA young boy you, like they trying to you yeah. so you favored by the people, but it's like the industry is like you still trying to push through the industry, even though you got nineteen stellars. Yeah, it, 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 and I think everybody can feel this, man. What I've discovered so many times is people don't understand, and this may be a quote for everybody, killing me won't crown you. Woo! And, you know what I'm saying? Killing me won't crown you. So what happens a lot of times mm -hmm. in multiple industries, you have gatekeepers, you have people who have a system in place where you wait your turn and it's this person's chance. I, it reminds me of the Bible when the prophet came looking for the king and he asked Jesse, uh, is this everybody? And Jesse, his own daddy said, well, uh, we got one out there in the field, out there with the sheep, out there with the sheep, but surely mm -hmm. he ain't it. And I think that's what God's doing right now. For me, black sheep, I'm re I'm rebranding the name brand sh black sheep. Yeah. So for Ooh. me, different is the new normal. So black sheep is a collective of individuals who are creatives, who are disruptors, who don't mind going against the grain, who don't mind stepping out on faith, you know, and that's what it is. You know, I tell everybody, I don't want to be, I made a vow. The last three weeks have taught me I'm not going to be to the next generation what I saw people be to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And for me, man, that, that's why I'm telling my whole team, my team a little upset with me right now, but they're just going to have to get over it. I'm telling them next year, don't put me in no stellar categories because we'll be up for it again. I'm like, no, nah, don't put me in any of them. We won three, we done won 19. 
only in the African-American community do we die with the baton in our hand. Mm. So for me, I want to take time and help build up an idea, build up a Tavinci, build up different people and see who else we can give an opportunity to make their dream come true. That's respected. That. That that's, so, that's integrity. Me, that's, that's super integrity. But let me ask you this, PMJ. When one say the more you win, the more they win. Like if you, yeah. if you the catalyst of it, should you keep getting the dubs so that they can keep getting the dubs like off of you and then with you and they're they're off like you know what I mean? Yeah, but I think it's a I think God put me in the gospel music industry to be a thorn into the mess that's been present. You know what I'm saying? And I think that man, a lot of times there's so many great people who haven't gotten the opportunity because what happens is when you got so many people who've been around for so long. And because gospel community is so small, there aren't many opportunities. So if you're not careful, the same people keep sucking up all the oxygen. Then we wonder why the genre suffocate. Mm. So for me, man, what I'm trying to do right now is, and it's that whole 360 degree leader. Like, hey, to everybody, to myself, to a Jonathan McReynolds, to, to all of us who always get nominated. How about we step back and just be a champion for the Stellas this year? Let's be a champion for the Stellas. How incredible would it be if each one of us had a had an artist that we were trying to push and we spent that time pushing them? Because again, this is what this is what frustrates me so many times. You got all these people saying stuff like, well, you know, it ain't about awards. It ain't about awards. Then they cry and go on super long lives afterwards trying to explain others. It's like, no, that ain't necessary. Like, mm. say you want something if you want it. God don't mind you having it. Say you want it. But at least understand that if we don't start loving each other, if we don't start making sure we open doors for each other, the community is going to continually dry up because the problem in gospel music ain't just music. It's also you got to stem back to the African-American church on the attack. And it means something different now to be a black Christian, you know, with different religions and different sectors. And now some of our brightest millennials and Gen Zers are going to multicultural churches. So the black church is losing all of its talent losing all of his worship leaders, losing all of his substance. So somebody has to be an apologist or a defender for this culture. Wow. Well, I just want to say, first of all, I just want to um, say that what you're going out to do, you achieving it. I receive it. You achieving yeah. it because like just, just the whole, just what you standing for and what you, and what you're trying to do is working. And I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm somebody that can say it from my own personal experience because before I was before I was even saved, I was watching. And wow. I just want to let you know that it's working. Yeah. It's working. Yeah, Whatever you're doing is working. So and that's the thing about them is is PMJ, you got this crazy thing. You always talk about like I don't have just one style. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like yeah. you listen, to you in the album, I'm in the car, you go feel all type of emotions, you go get lit. You might cry. You yeah. might feel like, you know what I mean? So it's one of those kind of styles. And I think you're very intentional, even the way that you're perceived. Like, yeah. and Lashin, I know we're going to talk about that. Your style is like, it's not just, yo, I'm just the average, maybe Christian rapper, Christian artist. Yeah. I feel like you have to be intentional with everything. Can you speak to that? How intentional you are with the details, how you present yourself, how your social looks, how your swag is. Like, that's not easy. Yeah, I, I learned at a very young age that you can't expect what you don't inspect. <clears throat> and I have to be very intentional about what you want to build. You have to be intentional. Uh, even when you look at the songs, Big and I Got It, those were in my computer. I was trying to give them away. That's why on Black Sheep Freestyle, I say if several of my heroes stop and check my they inbox, they'll see an MP3 of the songs y'all now sing. I was sending them to every artist I knew saying, hey, I got this song called Big. You would kill it. Got this song called I Got It. You would kill it. And then one night I went to a Travis Green concert. I bought it out for my team, my volunteers, and he brought me up to speak. And I started singing. And the moment I walked off the stage, I felt like I heard the Holy Spirit tell me to sing it, to sing. Here's what you have to be intentional, Ray. You know this. At that point, I'm 297 pounds. So now I have to understand, and this is what disruptive innovation is. It's not just one thing to be a disruptor. You got to be a disruptive innovator. I had to say, okay, I'm not going to out-sing them, but I can outwork them, uh, be more intentional, uh, be more direct, be more assertive, and let God breathe on it if he breathed on it. So I had to drop 65 pounds so the look could look contemporary. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I had to drop 60, 75 pounds so the look can look into, uh, contemporary. I had to bring in a stylist because I knew what I wanted to look like. I would get invited to perform and it would be uh, promo stuff. You know what I'm saying? Where they wouldn't pay you. They just give you the opportunity to perform. I would go in my pocket and spend five and $6,000 bringing my team with me because it was certain type of swag I wanted to present. I wanted to present masculinity. I wanted to present a kind of this sauce, this edge, like, yo, and as for me, it gets scrutinized sometimes like, yo, how many buttons you going to have unbuttoned? How many chains you going to have on? But again, with this new generation, like my son's school, my boy, I went to pick him up from football practice. They was like, your dad ain't a real dad, dad. Your dad ain't like the other dads. He got sauce. He got sweat. <laughs> you gotta be able, they got to be able to re- uh, relate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, yeah. it's probably the same thing for the church. It's like your pastor ain't a regular pastor. He got yeah. sauce. He got <laughs> there, go ahead. No, I was gonna ask on that. What how do you respond to people who might say your style is too out there or even go as far as saying your style is too sexy? I didn't Bro, know nobody said I was yeah, I didn't know they said I was sexy in these streets. Let me get a little closer. <laughs> no, hey, let me fluff my hair out a little bit. Yeah, you know. <laughs> You know, uh, if that's what the street's saying, man, who am I to argue with the streets? You know, yeah. I know that's right. And you know what? Even though it's crazy, PMJ, we was talking about in another episode, like it's church too sexy. In another yeah, episode, hey. it is. They showed you with the shirt out, right? Yeah. So I guess what I said. I said, what? guess what? what? My shirt gonna be out next. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, man. That's that's what I'm talking it's about. Man. Hey. Hey, I, I don't. It's so funny, man, and it's so crazy. It's only in the body of Christ where you get penalized for looking mm-hmm. good. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's only in the body of Christ where you get penalized for looking good. And to me, man, when I when I see my boys who's 16, 15, and 14, and I'm watching the TV and seeing who they look at, I don't want them to view them as successful by look. Then when they see us and we're talking about we love God and we look broke down. Right. Right. You know, man. So for me, man, I'm going to keep pushing the envelope. I'm going to keep um, my intent is not to be sexy, but sometimes you just can't help. Not my intent. <laughs> I'm hey, too big, sexy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, big bro, we have an internet, a little internet trouble with you. you. You good on the internet? You on a strong one? Ah, uh, yeah, we good over here. I got all my bars, man. My internet sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> you say your your wife said sexy. my internet sexy, <laughs> it's internet sexy, yo, big bro. So 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 with that, with that being said, man, you got this dual thing going on, pastoring, artist. Mm-hmm. You know, you're known as this crazy contemporary worshiper and artist that's kind of trending. And then you're known as this pastor that's killing it at the same time. And what some people don't know is you was killing it pastor and way before you was killing it, doing any kind of artist yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. So, I, I mean, how, how does that like which it's a hard thing to say, but which one in this point in your life is like, man, I'm totally I'm enjoying. Or is it like a combination of both? You can't really pick one, can you? Uh. <clears throat> Matter of fact, matter of fact, we got to introduce it, Shaq. It's time for this or that. Let's go ahead and just do it this or that. <laughs> oh, let's. You want to just hop in, jump off the porch? Let's just let's just hop into this or that, Shaq. Let's hop <laughs> into this or that. And you know the first one because you already just we just introduced it a little bit. Pastoring or artist, you got one you can do for the rest of your life. What you pick it? Pastoring. Which pastoring. one you gonna do? You gonna do? Pastoring, we going pastoring, pastoring. pastoring. I, don't I knew that. Yeah. I'm a way better pastor than I am an artist. And here's the problem, Ray. Music, if I had to say music, music is so entertaining and empowering. Pastoring is weighty. So if you ask me what I enjoy most, I enjoy right. music mo- most. Most. Okay. But when it comes to pastoring, you feel the weight of everything you carry in. You know, the more people listen to the music, the more people find out, oh, he a pastor, pastor. One person thought my name was Pastor Mike Jr., like Pastor Troy. They thought it was just like a stage name. But, you know, I would pastor, give, put a gun to my head, pastoring all day. Man, so so you heard, said, I, the, you go ahead, Shaq, what you say? Oh, my fault. 
No, go ahead. When I, when I heard you, when I heard that you were um that I, I was gonna I was gonna see you uh do a sermon, I said, I said, well, they said that you was just coming. I didn't know that you were going whether you were gonna perform or whether you're gonna pass. I said, I hope you pastor. Yeah. I hope you pastor because let me let me, let me let me let me free you. Go if ahead. you ever need to know what I'm doing, ask yourself, did you pay to get in there? If you <laughs> paid to get in there, I thought, I thought that's a I'm performing. If you came for free, I'm preaching. <laughs> I love it. He said, preaching? That's the ministry. That's the ministry. <laughs> he said, the sin, that's uh, God, God, my gift is making way for me. Yeah, absolutely. But that's the fact. Like, when you when you come to, I guess, I mean, you because when you, when you perform, of course, it's ministering, but let's just say performing versus minister, right? You get to just come free mm -hmm. and just whatever. When you got to preach or when you got a pastor, like you said, there's so much more that, that kind of you carrying that night, but yeah. you said that music because it went out a second is like your number one tool of evangelism now, right? Like that's your number one tool used in order to get the word out about Christ. Now that's absolutely a fact. And one of the things, like you said, PMJ, your your music career now is literally your number one tool for evangelism. Like, how does that even work? Man, the more people hear the music, the more they find the church and the more people find the messages, find the music. So I think we're almost at 50 million impressions on, on TikTok through the messages and different things like that. So when I walk through an airport now, I got one group of people stopping me because of the messages on TikTok. Another yeah. people group of people stopping because of the music. And what's happening is it's bringing all of them to Jesus. So for me. Uh, music has been an evangelistic tool, but if you had to ask me, you can only do one for the rest of your life. Yeah. I'm pastoring, Doc. I'm pastoring. <laughs> All right. This or that, choir or praise team? Praise team. Yeah. Really? I'm praise team. You knew, I knew he was going to say praise team. He told you already yeah, that praise. he wants the people with the swag, the praise team, the one that's dug in. See, but let me see, but it's the thing, though. When I say praise team, I'm not talking CCM. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. What, you, what you talking? Oh. I'm, when I say praise team, I'm talking praise team in its original sense. You know, that old, when mm. we used to actually do like, uh, when we used to do um, Lord, You Are Good and mm. um, and Byron Cage and different mm. things. Like, I like saucy. Like, I like my, I like that mix of where we come from and where we, where we are right now. Yeah, but that, your praise team on Sundays. Yeah, your, your praise team on Sundays is pretty saucy with it. So you sound like you'd rather have that than a, than a what is it, a Ricky Dillard choir? I'd rather, it depends on the mood I'm in. Right, right. It depends on the mood I'm in. Like, if I need to feel Jesus, give me yeah. John P. Key and New Life. Like, if yeah. I, like, take me home if I got to feel something. But for the most part, I like the energy of the praise team. Nine, 90s gospels or modern day? 90s. Easy one. Yeah. That's I very can see easy. that. I can said. see that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can see yeah. that. Yeah. Give me Fred Hammond. Give me John P. Key. Give me Hezekiah Walker. Give me Israel. That's early 2000. Like <clears throat> to me, the the all star the all star class is that 2000 class. You know, yeah. you got to give me James Fortune, Ty Trivet, J.J. Harrison, Jonathan Nelson. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That that class was just on a whole nother wave. You know what I'm saying? Hey, we got a we got a little feel of that Kirk Todd Mike combination at the end of the Stellars. I ain't gonna lie, man. May need to hop up on one of those family reunion days. We may need you to hop up on one of those family reunion days. I mean, y'all was looking that three combo was looking scary with all three of y'all, Mike. <laughs> yeah, that would, hey, that 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 would be crazy, man. That would be crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's some crazy fire, man. All right, all right, all right, Shaq. Man, let's talk music. Let's talk music. He was talking about man the the how intentional he is with with the next right now. Throw it at him. Talk to him about what you feeling, bro. Which one I ask him? So let me ask you a question, right? So you sound real like like impressed by music, and you, and it and it and it covers your life, right? So mm -hmm. before you about to do a show, you about to do a show. You about to go kill it. No, I'm I'm a separator. So you're about to do a show. What are you like? What's your pregame like ritual? Like, what are you doing? Like, before you about to do your show? Uh, you know how we do you get to it. You gotta, you gotta, you go through your little ritual, man. You you turn your turn up music on. Uh What's see, the you, gotta up think music? About it. you gotta think about it. I probably got 40 songs unreleased. 
Mm. I probably got 40 songs unreleased, man. Um, so literally I turn on that and that and that's my hip hop catalog. So I probably got 35 to 40 of those boys. And um, so I turn that <laughs> underground mixtape. <laughs> right. no, no, man. So definitely uh, I turn that on. Me and the group, <laughs> I stretch a little because my performances are high impact, high intensity. Uh, yeah. And then we uh, we get in our huddle. We say one, two, three, out the gate. And then we kind of just go do what we do, man. That's what we do. So what about in a sense of pastor? So now it's your pastor pregame. That pastor in pregame, I got this. Uh, I got this instrumental that's like uh, intercession. It's real different. Yeah. So like when I'm getting ready to perform, my music on like devil. Uh, yeah. I, 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 yeah. I, I, I get ready to pre. It's I know my son come to the Baba I'm gonna let yeah. you in on a secret. I'm gonna let you in on a secret. If you go watch Pastor Mike Junior performance clothes. And Pastor Mike Jr. preaching clothes, they totally different. Mm. Yeah. Because mm. I this is gonna sound so crazy. I don't feel like I can be effective if I'm fly. Mm. Wow. So, like, wow. so if you if you see me up there, like if you go watch a sermon, you'll probably never see me with a watch on. Or like, like if I feel like I'm too saucy, I have to take it off when I preach. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Is it because That's, you don't you don't right. want to be a distraction? Mainly yeah, exactly and I just it. and I just feel like I don't know, like some, like to me, like I never want to overshadow what's That's to good. be said. Yeah, mm. you know what I'm saying. Like, I don't want them to walk away like, man, his shoes were so far and miss the whole <laughs> message. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. for yeah. the most part, man, like my team will tell you, ninety percent of the time, if you go watch my sermons, you're gonna say I don't wear the same thing every time. Mm -hmm. Like if I could buy one outfit, like if I can wear black jeans. And a bl all black shirt with a white different is the new normal. Every Sunday, I would wear that. You do, you, do you feel like we don't look at artists the way we look at like pastors? Like in other words, because that's crazy, right? In other words, like when you're saying when I'm when I'm performing, there's a certain kind of swag, whatever energy I gotta have. Isn't does that carry over to our preachers though? Like, don't we want that same kind of swag, or is it like, no, I don't want my pastor to be as fly, or you know what I mean? How you, how you feel about that? Um, uh, I think there is a, another level of expectation on the pastor, you know, yeah. what I'm saying? as an artist, you know, like I, my shirt be all the way down in here. Nobody, nobody ever bother me. It's like, Hey, come do the show. I throw a right. hat on. Nobody asked me to do nothing. Uh, but there is a different level of expectation when it comes to your man. Cause think you're a man of God. You know what I'm saying? Right. So right. for me, uh, and that's a slippery slope because you know how it is. These new, us the new wave of pastors, we saucy. You know, when you look yeah, at Mike yeah. Todd, when you look at a Ferdy, when you look at everybody, uh, a Madu, everybody, they dress code be on point, boy. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And but I also think that's contextual. When you look at those churches, those aren't predominantly African American churches built off of African American context. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So a lot yeah. of times you got to think about where the church was founded, where the church is situated, and who the church frequently fellowships with. Because who the church frequency frequently fellowships with determines who they also see, which creates the standard in the culture. So a lot of times when you look at predominantly African-American churches, the picture of a pastor is T.D. Jakes. The picture of a pastor is Ari Vernon. Picture of a pastor is so and so and so. So what happens now is when they see a young African-American cat come up who look a certain way, he looks childish because he don't have on a suit. Mm. So I think that pressure is different based off the context. Yeah. Shaq, yeah. ask him about his top artists, man. Go ahead. Who we so, listening to right now? Who up and coming? So, not like I said, we, we back in music. We back in music. So you, you pre-gaming. The new artists, you talk about bringing in this new, like the new wave and, 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 and like sponsoring the new wave. Who, what's your top three new artists? Like jumping out the gate, they get fresh. They My get top moves. three new artists, of course, I got to go with Adia. She in the camp. Um, I think she really finna set the world on fire, man. This mixtape, uh, where this EP she finna drop, um, it's finna just if if God breathed on it, it's finna be ridiculous. I'm gonna go with Tavinci, who's also in my camp. He just dropped the project, it's going crazy. And I would say my third, I would, I would. 
And I don't think this guy is new, but I still don't feel as if his time has – he's gotten the attention he needs. That's uh, that's uh, Rich Talbert. Mm-hmm. Like, Rich oh, Talbert yeah. is a first-class worship leader, bro. And his album was phenomenal. So I can't wait to see what they do. Yeah, when when somebody amazing. in your camp, what that look like when they're in your camp, Mike? Like, like, are you in the studio with them? Are you hands on? Are you like taking care of like the studio time? What does being in Mike camp look like? And how can somebody mm-hmm. get in your camp if they watch it? Uh, so what we're doing now is we we putting a label together, Rock City Media Group. That's the label. Uh, and we're also toying with doing a sub label called the Black Sheep Collective uh, for our uh, Christian hip hop, Christian R&B swag. Uh, so if we if you're in the camp, I'm literally in the studio with you, uh, helping pick songs. Uh, I just uh, I just kind of I just recorded a demo for Dia this morning. Like, hey, check this out. Uh, and we're going to another level now. I'm on the verge of closing this huge distribution deal to where now for each person who's in my camp under our uh, regime, they will get major distribution, DSP placement, radio promotions, different things like that. So we're not just trying to give people to talk we try and actually put our money and our effort where our mouth is Pause. Mm. oh amen I love that. Jeez, how do you man. find the time how do you find the time for all of this uh, <laughs> like what most, is your what is your time your time management routine it's horrible my time management horrible i try to operate my life off orbit not order so order mm-hmm. is one two three four five orbit the same way the solar system revolves around the S-U-N, my life revolves around the S-O-N. So there are times when my family is closer than my career. Like right now, I should be on the road right now, man. Right now, I should be on the road. But it's the first day of school. I didn't want to miss Mason's first day of ninth grade. I didn't want to miss Miles and McKinley first day pictures. So in the orbit, the family was closer to the sun than my music. Wow. You know, oh my for God. me, that's how I flow. Mm. Oh, thank you so much for that. Like on a personal note, they, they, really tell, like they tell you one, two, three, four, five, and that's not real. You know, like I hate when people say, "Well, you know, your family come first. No, they don't. Like if I don't go out here and get this money, how are they gonna eat? Mm-hmm. They can't. They can't come first right. in the sense of my presence right now. They got to right. come first in the sense of my desire to fulfill the needs that they have. So one, two, three, four, five just never worked for me. So once I put my life in this orbit. Now it's like, like right now we've been virtual almost four months at church Hmm. and it's been some of the best church we've ever had because I had to prioritize budgeting. We're trying to fix this new property over 200,000 square feet, almost when all these properties, you know what I'm saying? So trying to get all that together. So I try to do orbit. I'm I'm taking that. Yo. <laughs> I'm taking that. I'm, a, I'm an admin, so it's easy for me to be like, okay, this, 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 this. So even with even with working closely with uh Ray over here, he's very much like, nah, I'm I'm feeling this, I'm feeling that. I'm just like, okay, it could be hard. So that perspective is definitely helpful. Thank Ray, you, you definitely an orbiter for sure. You're definitely ah! an orbiter. <laughs> I'm Orbiter. I'm an orbiter. We're an orbiter. <laughs> orbiter. Look. Dude's an orbiter. But I'm not going to lie to y'all. Can I tell y'all something? Like, listen, listen. Y'all got to realize, PMJ, listen to me. Like, <laughs> people don't like. Like, this dude is like, when I say mad scientist genius, it's like <laughs> scary. Like people no, really don't know, real. and it's and they shouldn't. It's like they don't really respect. Like they don't understand why Drake yeah. is so raw, like Drake. That's um, how it is with PMJ. And yeah. like when I tell y'all, it's certain people that they just see it. Like they see it as far as like the little things. So when he says even like that orbit kind of perspective, and that was think of that like that, right? Yeah. But that's right. because his mind works like that. Yeah. Like I'm like PMJ. Like who 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 gave you the ideas, man? To like kind of do if you watch his IG, he got this thing that he's been riding with how long now? PMJ like two, two, years, years, two years, where he'll have these quotes and whatever. And I'm like, who's making those for you? Everybody? He's like, I, I created that. Like I thought of that concept. I'm like, when? He was like, when I'm in the bathroom, just like literally <laughs> sitting on this the, the yeah. throne. Like like, but that's the kind of it. Don't turn off when you got that kind of mind of yours. Yeah. How mm-hmm. it feel. When did you realize you got a different kind of mind? Mm. I knew I had a different type of mind. Fifth grade. Mm. 
I'm in Miss Cannon's class in the fifth grade. She says, all right, guys, if you guys get this right, we get to go outside, we get to watch the movie. And she drew like five letters. It was hangman. And before anybody guessed the letter, I guessed the word. Mm. And she looked, I never get Miss Cannon looked at me. She said, do it again. And I, so like, I've always <laughs> been able to process. Like, and, and that sounds so crazy, Man. but I always been that. So my, my superpower, if I was an Avenger, my superpower would be prophetic insight. So if you put me in something, God gives me this ability to, to almost pull it apart and see mm -hmm. all of the intricacies mm -hmm. of it. And I put it back together. And then the way I move, you would think I had prophetic foresight, but it's really prophetic insight. You know, oh, so for yeah. me, when I got to do my music, I sat down and I was like, I'm going to go contemporary. Everybody going to worship. See, when I hit with big, Everybody was trying to go to the CCM dipped in chocolate. Mm -hmm. Right. Or everybody had balance. So when I looked at radio, everything was slow. I said, no, I'm going yeah. contemporary. Then I looked at the look. Everybody was three piece suiting it. Now, if you come to the Stellas, everybody got their chest out. So it's like, no, I'm going to go contemporary. <laughs> and, and so now I had to look at it and, and it lets me get it. I said, no, I need to go new artist of the year, second year. I, I literally told my team this. We need to win new artists. The second year, we need to be up for artists of the year. The third year, we need to win it. So, so it was this prophetic, no, we're going to go promo. Give me all the promo dates. I don't care if they're free. I'm going to sacrifice it. We're going to get in the car. We're going to go figure it out. I just want to keep going, keep going. So yeah. for me, it's just that prophetic insight. While being a prophet, because you even told us it was double on our house here, here back in Cleveland, and he didn't even know what he was saying at that point, and he came to Cleveland he yeah. preaches in our city. Watch this. Yeah. He tells our family, man, I sense double on the house. Now, yeah. at that time, nobody knows in the world. No, Watch this. Can't. My sister is pregnant, Shanae, and Naj is pregnant. We're sitting there, sitting in the living room. He tells my parents there's double on the house. At the same time, y'all, all of these double blessings that's been happening at our church. So I can't explain it, man. Mike is just prophetic. And he's a genius, man. Yeah. So I, we appreciate Mike. Listen, we're going to yes. let you go, bro. Let me just ask you a question. What took these Negroes so long to respect you? I mean, hey, why, why did it take so long? <laughs> what, took, what took them so long to put the respect on your name, bro? Hey, man, you know, like I tell everybody, I'm tired of hearing big talk from little men feeling like 50 when he shouted out many men. It's like they, they, oh, they, didn't, even, they didn't even understand. Goodness. They didn't understand. I don't need to rush. I've been waiting patiently. Sinatra, the gospel. I'm just speaking frankly. I built this brick by brick. I'm talking frankly. Truth is, everybody yeah. underestimate me greatly. 21, 21. How many awards did it really take me? Like, they, they better oh. leave me alone, boy. Oh. Oh. I'm gone. They better I'm gone. leave me alone. They sit on that. <laughs> they, sit on that. <laughs> and they, don't, they, they don't even know. And I tell everybody, man, it's like, but again, I see I don't come from this. So what I discovered in the in the gospel sector is everybody kind of came from this. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. well, this person sung background for this person. This person did this for right. that person. This yeah. person was here for 20 years. Oh, this person is now this person, but they've been singing. So out of nowhere, here I come with no pedigree, with no background. With And again, I understand being viewed. T.D. Jake, Bishop T.D. Jake said something to me at Pastor Keon's church. He prophesied. He said, I want you to be comfortable being a foreigner. He said, because no matter where you go, you won't fit. And for me, I don't really have a lot of friends. I don't really have a lot of pastor friends. Don't have a lot of artist friends. My whole life, I just kind of always been this proverbial black sheep out here on this island. Yeah. You know, so for me, man, I'm at, I'm at the point in my life to where... I'm only in competition with myself at this point. You know what I'm saying? I'm 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 only I'm only in competition with myself. You know, they joked and said I would never stand next to Kurt. Now they shocked to see that my legs work. Mm. Oh my goodness. So I had so I it's a segment on here on, on Beyond Sunday called Sit, right? And I had a scripture prepared. I'm not going to do sick. We're not going to do it. I'm just going to read this scripture. Okay, you ready? Because that's crazy. <laughs> Mark 10, Mark 10, 31. 
but many who are the greatest now come will on be the least important then. <laughs> and those who seem least important now will be the greatest then. I'm I'm leaving. I'm gone. It's all y'all. Y'all have a good day. That. <laughs> you can just sit on, that. sit on that. That's crazy, bro. That's, That's crazy. Wild. PMJ, if you don't know, man, now you know. He is the legend right now that's killing it. Um, and if he don't win this dub, dub, listen to us and look at us right now. <laughs> if y'all don't get that to him, we know some up with y'all system. But we're not going to say no. We love y'all. We respect y'all. But just know it ain't right if he don't win this dub. That's all I'm going to say. That's all hey. I'm going to say. Hey. He should have won the big year, but we ain't going to bring hey. it up. We ain't going to bring that part up. <laughs> hey. No, nah, but I'm, I'm excited, man. I tell everybody if I can bless anybody. My son Mason blessed me yesterday. He asked me a question that I couldn't answer. He said, Dad, how do most whales die? I said, they get eaten by sharks. He said, nope, most whales die because they drown. I argued my son back and forth. I said, whales, it's impossible for whales to drown. They swim for a living. He said, Dad, whales are mammals. That's why they always have to come up for air. He said, most whales get tired of swimming. And the problem is they are living in a land that they are not of. And that's the problem with so many millennials, so many of us gifted creatives. We're trying to thrive in a land. This is not our home. So when you get placed in uncomfortable environments, you got to ask yourself, am I finna sink or am I finna swim? Mm -hmm. And we swimmers over here. I'm going to say this and I'm going to go. I'm an orbiter. No, I'm an ah, orbiter. I'm we, an orbiter. <laughs> we love y'all. Beyond Sunday. Episode what? Is it five, four something? Five, man. We, we doing it, y'all. We love y'all. Subscribe. Hey, if you're an orbiter type, I'm an orbiter. In I'm an orbiter. Orbiter. A a orbiter in these streets. <laughs> Subscribe, man. If this bless you, y'all know, man. Support. Uh, and, man, this is only the beginning. Yeah. We'll see y'all soon. Blessings to everybody. Thank you, PMJ, for being on. Bless y'all, man. One and only. We appreciate you, brother. Thank we appreciate you. you, bro. Always you. come through, man. Always come through. And not everybody do that. Seriously, from my heart, you yeah. don't have to do that. Even though you're my big bro, you always yeah. come through. And I love you, man. Thank you. Thank I'm going to keep my you. shirt open. Hey. Keep your shirt open. One more button. One more button. <laughs> One more button. <laughs> One more button. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Peace. We love y'all. Peace. <laughs>